On call? Here. Commissioner Dickerson? Here. Commissioner Mohajer? Here. Commissioner Lopez is absent. Chair Seifert? Here. Thank you. And has everyone had a, a chance to read the minutes and do we have a motion? I, uh, I move that we approve the minutes. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the minutes are approved. At this time, we're going into a public comment period. Uh, Dana, would you like to take over? Yes, thank you, Chair Sievert and Commissioners. This is Dana Eady, the Planning Manager. And if you are on Zoom and you wish to comment on an agenda item, please use the raised hand icon on the Zoom platform. Once you are recognized, you will then be unmuted and allowed to comment on the business at hand in the order received. The maximum comment time is three minutes or is otherwise directed by the chair. And if you are calling in and wish to be acknowledged, please raise your hand by dialing star nine and identify yourself when unmuted. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Okay. See anything on the consent calendar? Looks like we're going into right right into 5A. It's a continued item. The Blosser Ranch single family residential subdivision, lots eight and ten, planned development permit, investing tentative track map at the northeast corner of South Blosser Road and West Battles Road. Uh, do we have any ex parte by the commissioners? Actually, I do. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I do have ex parte. Um, I had a couple of Zoom meetings with the applicant and uh, uh, Lori Tamura, and then I also had uh, several email correspondences with the applicant. Very good. Uh, Commissioner Mahajer? I also had ex parte at a Zoom meeting. Commissioner Dickerson? Um, I haven't had any um, ex parte communication with the applicant, but I have had communication with a number of people, including one commissioner, regarding the Blossom Ranch project. I've looked into the business uh, build for rent model. Uh, and I am not going to into this public hearing with a predetermined decision in mind. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, I've also had a ex parte meeting uh, with the uh, applicant and the uh, team, uh, Lori Tamara, U UPC. Uh, Dana, would you like to take it? Okay, so I'll go ahead and uh, give the staff presentation. This is Dana Eady, Planning Division Manager. Um, so. Tonight I'm going to be presenting the Blosser Ranch Single Family Residential, residential Subdivision. This is lots 8 and 10 um, of the Area 5B specific plan. And this item was last presented to your commission on March 15th, uh, where it was continued. So just to briefly go over um, the location and project information, um, it's located at the northeast corner of Battles Road and Blosser Road. Um, the project site is currently utilized for agricultural cultivation, um, but it is zoned for residential development. Um, the surrounding development includes single family homes to the north, south, and southwest, Manami Park to the east, and then industrial development to the northwest. And the Santa Maria Fairgrounds and the high school are also to the northeast. So this slide depicts the zoning of the site. Um, the site includes approximately 59 acres of uh, land that's zoned for single family residential, and that's the area in yellow. And then there's a high density residential development in the orange here. Um, the northwest portion of the property is zoned for commercial development. And then over on the eastern side, there's a portion of the property that's zoned uh, for a new school and then an open space area to accommodate a future um, sports complex there. So this is the overall tract map showing the location for the proposed subdivision that we're discussing tonight, which is on lots eight and 10. Um, the master tract map was approved uh, by the City Council for recordation back on March 7th. Um, this is the first phase of the single family residential development within um, Area 5B. And future phases will be developed over 
lots 9 and 11, um, which is located here, and also on lots 4. These are all zoned for single-family residential. And then uh, in addition, um, the applicant's also going to be bringing forward the development of the multifamily residential parcels as well, um, and those are here, lots 2 and lot 3 and lot 7. So this is the tentative tract map. Um, it is to subdivide lots 8 and 10 into, uh, to develop 105 single family dwellings. Um, the lots range in size from just under 4,000 square feet to some lots that are around 7,000 square feet. Um, 96 of the lots would also include a detached accessory dwelling unit in the rear of the property, and all of the units would be rented. The, um, ma the map includes 24-foot wide roads and uh, with entrance and exit off of Western Avenue and um, an exit only to La Brea. And that's, this is the exit only out to La Brea and then the main entrance and exit is over here off of um, Western. So the project includes five plans or models. All of the models are two-story homes, which is permitted in the specific plan. Um, they are, for this first phase, proposed with a Spanish-style architecture, but future phases um, in the other lots within the specific plan would include a craftsman-style um, home craftsman style and, uh, um, oh, the other style's escaping me, but there's a couple different architectural styles that we'll be presenting to you. And those are currently being reviewed by staff. Um, so as you can see here, the, each of the home styles has um, s some different shades and colors. Um, the garage doors are, are pretty similar, but um, the intent was to use some different um, architectural details and trims so that while it still is a Spanish style, that, that the homes do have a little bit of individuality between the models. So the, the project includes ample um, amenities for residents, and that includes walking paths, seating areas, pocket parks with barbecue areas, a pet park, a community center with a study area for children, um, there's also a park with a play area for children adjacent to the community center and uh, landscaping throughout. And uh, there's an example of those amenities are shown in this slide. And then on here, the areas in green are where those would be located. And this is the location of the community center here. So um, on March 15th, this project was reviewed by the Planning Commission and it was continued with a request for staff to provide um, additional information regarding the project's conformance with the Blosser Southeast Area 5B specific plan um, to look at any potential revisions to the project that would result in fewer modifications to development standards that were being requested, and also to look at similar build for rent communities and the impacts to the rental market in Santa Maria that could result from one entity managing a large number of rentals in the city. So the Vlosser Southeast specific plan was adopted by the council in September of 2020. Um, the plan includes the framework for future development of the site. It includes standards and criteria for development. Um, so there's a section on community design standards for residential and community development. Um, and the standards also address architectural design of homes, lighting, landscaping, and site design. And it also addresses amenities, um, such as the new public park or pocket parks within the subdivisions and then the sports complex that will have soccer fields, um, basketball courts, playgrounds, um, landscape parkways, and, and those sorts of amenities. The objectives of, of the specific plan discuss that it would provide a variety of housing types that would attract diverse community income groups and would assist the city in complying with state housing mandates, that it would include safe roadways in and around the site that are appropriate in size to allow for multimodal transportation, slow vehicular speeds and safety, 
that the development would expand on and complement the land uses on Blosser Road. It would be coordinated with the residential, commercial, and school uses all in one location. Um, it mentions safe pedestrian and bicycle connections to other on-site uses within the plan area, as well as a smooth transition between the development and the surrounding uses. Um, and that includes the Blosser Southwest and then the areas 5A and 5C that are in the specific plan area. The specific plan has specific, uh, development standards for the R1 zone, which apply to this particular project. Um, it mentions that the project would um, not exceed eight dwelling units per acre, and there's no minimum lot size. And this project is around six dwelling units per acre, so it is below the eight dwelling units per acre requirement. Um, the purpose is to provide a suitable environment for single living on a scale that is representative of a traditional neighborhood by developing lots and special residential design and yard requirements while maintaining adequate individual private open space. So this project includes individual lots that have open space area for the main home and the accessory dwelling unit. Um, the ADUs are accessory to the main residence, and they're going to be permitted ministerially, meaning they're not part of the plan development permit that you're considering tonight. Those would be permitted with a building permit um, separate from that. Um, the specific plan does not prohibit a design with narrower private roadways and guest parking. Um, the project includes amenities for residents, pocket parks, play areas, and a community center. And those types of amenities are called out in the specific plan to be included. Um, I did want to mention that the, the narrower roadways, their, their private roads, they would also result in slower vehicular speeds, um, which is also one of the objectives that's mentioned in the specific plan. Um, and then, as I mentioned, there is a, there is going to be a variety of architectural homes. The other home style I did not mention was farmhouse style. And um, that'll be in future phases. And uh, so this project is requesting now three modifications to development standards. Originally it was five, and it's been reduced down to three now. And the specific plan does allow the Planning Commission to grant modifications to development standards if the findings can be made. So the three modifications that are currently being requested are a reduction in the front yard setback for the living area of the homes, a reduction in uh, the landscaped area for front yards. So actually it's asking for an increase in the paved area. It, the um, municipal code requires 50% of the front yard to be landscaped and the applicant's asking for an, in, an increase in the paved area there. And then there's a side yard setback reduction for six of the corner lots um, in the subdivision. So the modifications that were presented last time that are no longer being requested is a side yard setback reduction that would accommodate building a carport for the ADU parking. That's no longer requested. And also um, the site distance area that was mentioned for one of the lots is also no longer being requested. The applicant was able to um, revise the plans so that that's no longer proposed. A couple of other changes that were made to the project include widening the sidewalks. So the sidewalks were actually four feet wide. They've been widened to five feet in width. And the driveways to the homes have been increased by a foot. So they are now 21 uh, feet in length. So I'm gonna go through each of the three modifications separately and then um, so I can get into more of the details. So this is the first modification and it's to increase the amount of front yard paving. Um, so as I mentioned, the code states no more than 50% paving in the front setback area. And the request is to allow the paving of 54% of the, the front yards. And that's to accommodate a Hollywood style driveway that would allow uh, access to the ADU parking space that's back here. And it would also, the request is also to allow for a, an additional 
car for the ADU to be parked here in that front yard area. Um, the last time this was at your commission, uh, it was not a Hollywood style driveway. It actually, w this area was, all, it was completely paved and the applicant has revised it to turn it into more of the Hollywood style driveway. So there's a little more landscaped area here in the middle. So the prior design was 59% was paving and it, the, doing this design revision um, resulted in reducing it to uh, by 5%. So it's now at 54%. So the second modification is the front yard setback reduction. Um, the specific plan requires uh, th the homes to be set back 20 feet from the property line and garages uh, have to be set back six feet from the living area of the home. So this is a request to allow for a five foot reduction in the front yard setback for this front living area of the home. The garage still meets the requirement. Um, it's actually set back now at 21 feet, but the front of the home, they are asking on, on the lots to allow a five foot encroachment into that. And um, as I mentioned before, they did uh, lengthen this driveway by one foot to 21 feet. And this is showing a larger truck um, parked in the driveway to show that there would be room for a larger vehicle if one were to be parked there. And then the third modification is um, to request a reduction in the side yard setback on six of the lots within the subdivision. And those lots are highlighted in yellow in this slide. The specific plan requires a, a 10 foot setback on one side and 19 feet on the other side. And so this request is to allow a two foot up to a nine foot encroachment uh, within that side yard area. And so you can see the area that would encroach is in the red here um, by my cursor. And um, yeah, that would be on these six lots. Um, the, the rest of the lots would, would meet the specific plan requirements. Um, and then as I mentioned earlier, the sidewalks were also widened from four, four feet to five feet. And so those are the three modifications now that the applicant is requesting um, approval for. And so now I'm gonna move into some statistics on housing and, and the rental item. Um, so we did, uh, in response to the direction we received at the last meeting on March 15th, um, staff did do some research on existing housing statistics in Santa Maria. And um, according to data obtained from the State Department of Finance, the 2022 population and housing estimates, the total number of housing units in the city of Santa Maria is 30,732. And of those units, 30,316 of those are occupied. So about 98.6% are occupied. Of those units, 15,080 are owner occupied and 15,236 are renter occupied. So that's around 50% um, each. And then um, on the far side here, you can see the um, breakdown of the different housing units um, that are the type of units uh, of housing. So the other item that we looked into was the um, the gross rental, um, the average rent in Santa Maria, and we found that it's 1,475 per month. That's the average rent. So um, that just gives you an idea of, of where we're at with our housing numbers. And then for this project, for Blosser Ranch, if you added, um, so this, this project is proposing at, at full build out to include 1,492 total units. So there's around 1,170 primary units, and then you have 330, that's 338 single family dwellings, 832 apartment units, and then 322 ADUs. So at full build out of this project, 
um, if you add that to the current rental market in Santa Maria, um, that would represent approximately 8% of the rental units in the city. It's around 4.5% of the total housing units. And um, the, so that's about 8% of the units that would be managed under um, you know, one company, basically, for this project, because this is a, a, a build for rent type of project. Um, the city, city staff looked for similar build to rent communities in other jurisdictions in California, and we were not able to locate an existing example that would provide the data requested by the commission that would we'd be able to look for impacts of rent from these communities on, on, a, at a, whole, at, on a whole. Um, there are some examples in other states, um, such as Arizona, but these are also newer developments, and so they haven't been um, around for a length of time that would be able to show if there was an impact or not. Um, Santa Maria does not currently have a rent control ordinance in place, but in California, we do have, there is the Tenant Protection Act, that's AB 1482, and it provides a cap on rent increases of 5% plus the change in the regional CPI, um, or it's no more than 10% of the lowest gross rental rate charged to the tenant during any 12-month period for most of the rental properties. Um, AV 1482 does not apply to properties that are less than 15 years old. So for this particular project, that would not go into effect until the project was uh, 15, 15 years after getting occupancy um, on that item. Um, so there is pending um, legislation, though, on the Tenant Protection Act that aims to further limit rent increases applied to more types of residential properties and also add more eviction protection for California renters. So um, there is some pending legislation that um, may make changes to, to that act. So um, before I conclude the presentation, I did want to mention there were um, a couple of minor revisions to conditions 29 and 30 of the tract map. Um, the only change was we just had an issue with um, referring to the conditions. The numbering was just off a little bit. So I just have it shown here just to make sure that that gets captured um, in, the, in the conditions. And then I also wanted to mention that we received five comment letters for this item. Um, all of the letters are in support of the project. Um, and I'll just quickly summarize them. So we received a letter from Dan Rinksmeyer um, voicing support for the project. There was another letter from Ted Wendell, and that's with A.T. Steele University, again, um, in support of the project and mentioning the need uh, for housing um, and that they're have, they have uh, trouble finding housing in Santa Maria. Um, the applicant submitted a letter with um, a report that was prepared by John Burns Real Estate Consulting that uh, discusses the local housing market and it's a summary of supply and demand conclusions for, rent, for the rental project. We also got one from Dignity Health, um, again mentioning that um, it's becoming increasingly difficult to find housing in California and that this project would make a significant difference in, um, in the need for finding housing. And then finally, there's uh, one letter from um, Pat Cusack mentioning uh, the need for affordability, affordable housing in the city and um, that the amenities of the project are, uh, are needed. So those are the five letters that we received. And um, so in conclusion, staff's recommendation is that the commission by motion approve the plan development permit as conditioned and by resolution approve the tentative tract map with the revisions to the conditions that I mentioned in the staff presentation. So thank you, I'm available for questions. Um, the applicant is here and they also have a presentation and are here for questions as well. Uh, thank you very much, Dana. Uh, do we have any questions for staff? Um, Commissioner Dickerson. Uh, a quick question on 
Uh, I think you had it as item number two in our in our packet. It's modification number four, front yard setback reduction. Um, the question I had was for the previous two, uh, or in this case, it's on either side, uh, modifications, the increase in front yard paving and the side yard setback. There's the standard kind of boilerplate thing that uh, staff puts in the staff supports the approval of this modification. You have that for those two, but it's omitted on the last one. Does staff, did it, was that by accident or do you actually have an issue with the front yard setback uh, reduction? Uh, Commissioner Dickerson through the chair, that um, was not intentional. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Mr. Blanco. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Dana, um, you know, you mentioned the, the road widths and talking about 20 feet, I think you mentioned. Um, I just wanted to make sure that there's, it's consistent because at least what I'm seeing on sheet two labels the roads as 24. So just. That, that was a mistake I made. They are 24 foot wide roads. Okay, yeah. great. Sorry right, for the you. confusion on no that. No problem, thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. This time we'll, uh, uh, one, one sec. Uh, ex parte, I did uh, talk to one other commissioner about this also. Uh, now we could have a uh, applicant presentation. Yes. And please state your name and address for the record. Tom Yamini with uh, Canfield Development. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the Planning Commission. Um, first and foremost, thank you uh, for taking the time to uh, hear our project and to uh, go back and forth and have real dialogue on um, adding benefits to this project and making sure that it's um, a project that's actually beneficial for the, the, the residents. Um, and thank you to city staff and all the different departments for their, um, their willingness to talk to us and go back and forth and really have good dialogue. I think it, at the end of the day, benefits um, both the residents and the developer and the city, so we appreciate it. Um, today we're here to uh, talk about Blossom Ranch, lots eight and 10. Um, it's, uh, we're, we're continued from March 15th, and today I want to focus on, at least for the first part of my presentation, uh, the benefits of this project. Oops. There we go. Um, we kind of breezed over this last time, but I do want to um, focus a little bit on the Canfield quality. You know, we are a new developer in town, and you know, that comes with, um, you know, people, people don't know us, they haven't seen our product type yet here in the city. Um, but we really, really, really do go to the ends of, you know, the up ends to make sure that the resident experience is top notch. Um, you know, in our office, the, the dialogue back and forth on finishes, on amenities, parks, walkability, all that is discussed. We, we're, 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 we're not here coming in here and throwing in, a, you know, some sort of project that we're gonna kind of leave and walk away from and it won't be maintained. We really spend a lot of time, energy, and money to make sure that the final product type actually benefits the residents. Um, so I wanted to make that point before we, before we start. Um, oh, we're going backwards. Okay, so area, area 5B is located between Stowell, uh, Blosser, Depot, and Battles Road. Um, the final map was recorded, dividing the uh, overall site into 12 individual lots. Uh, today we are going to be looking at lots 8 and 10, which is the first single family development. Uh, let's start with the public amenities. So we, the, together with the city, uh, Canfield has signed a memorandum of understanding to dedicate the 19-acre uh, piece of land that's uh, right off of Depot between Stowell and uh, Battles Road for a sports complex. This is for no out-of-pocket cost to the city. This is in exchange for Quimby fees, and this is going to benefit the entire region. This is not just going to benefit the residents of Blossom Ranch. Um, as Dana mentioned, we'll have you know basketball courts, soccer fields, etc., and this is open to the entire community. Um, some of the other public amenities uh, that will be featured on the site um, is there's a 23-acre there's a, a, a new school that's planned for the site. We're currently in talks uh, with the Santa Maria Bonita School District um, to progress that along. Uh, there's also a, a two-acre new fire station, which is going to be located right, right off of La Brea and uh, Blossa Road. 
Um, and this is something that was not uh, planned for in the specific plan. This was not something that was, um, uh, you know, uh, written in the EIR or any, during the initial approvals. This was something that we kind of heard the need from the fire department um, and met with them and were able to uh, give two acres of our retail site, um, which is the exact location that they wanted uh, for a future fire station. Again, no out-of-pocket cost to the city. This is in exchange for credits to the fire fees associated with the project. Um, together with lots eight and 10, uh, what you see on the screen is the public amenities that will be built. Um, and just to give you a, a, a quick run through, we, we will be building out of La Brea, the build out of La Brea West, which is the western half of um, highlighted in green. There's uh, the build out of Western South, the bottom half. Um, there's the build out of the roundabout at the center of the site. There'll be a stormwater basin, which is lot 12, right under lots eight and 10 to, so, to uh, treat the, the stormwater that uh, flows through the site. We'll also be constructing the Battles Channel, which goes along uh, Battles Road between Blosser and Depot. That channel is currently, uh, we're currently in plan check and in talks with the Department of Public Works and the county, um, but something that's not mentioned here is that on top of the channel itself, there'll be an additional green space with a, with a walking trail that also will benefit uh, the community. Um, there'll be a Stowell Blosser intersection widening. There's some safety issues there, um, and, uh, and together with the Department of Public Works, we, we managed to, um, put together a good design that will be safe, um, and that will be built out together with the first phase of the project, um, and that's at the top of the screen. Um, there'll be an upgrade to the existing sewer line, which is currently 15 inches and runs along La Brea, the future La Brea Road through the site, and uh, we'll be upgrading that to 24, to 24 inch sewer line. Um, there'll be three new traffic signals, a uh, new traffic signal at La Brea and, uh, and Blossa Road, a new tra traffic signal at Western and Battles Road, and then another traffic signal that will be at Thornburg and Battles that's directly east of the site. This is just a quick project overview. Um, Dana already kind of went through it, but uh, essentially there's uh, 106 lots, 105 of them are uh, residential units, 96 of those lots will include a future ADU, and there'll be one large lot for the community open space. Um, I will point out that while we are looking at this as a built for rent product type, uh, we are mapping this site for the future ability to be able to sell the individual lots separately if the market allows for that. Um, and that means that the entire site will be f potentially for sale or the entire site will be built for rent. There won't be a mixture of for sale and for rent units within the, this one community. Uh, this will be a professionally managed private gated community. The community will include state of the art amenity package, which we'll go through in a moment, um, with pocket parks, green spaces, and uh, walkways throughout. And this will also be a green community. We're including solar on every uh, home and EDU. Uh, there'll be an EV charging station, not only for the main home, but also an EV charging station for the, the cars that will park in the EDU spaces, which we'll get to in a minute. And this will have a reduced GHG uh, uh, footprint. So now let's go into the amenity package, and I, I really do want to focus a little bit on the amenities here because, you know, in touring some of the uh, other developments in the city and in the region, I, I really want to be able to relate to you guys the, 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 the amount of amenities that are just for these 105 lots. And as Dana mentioned, we'll be coming forward with other developments. Each development on this project has its own package of amenities, and that's designed to keep the residents of our project on the site to allow for that sports complex, which is off of Depot Road, to be open to the community, and that it doesn't just support the people who live on our site. So we've included a lot of the amenities on our site to keep our residents from using the public facilities and take the burden off of um, the, the public facilities. So there's a clubhouse um, located in the center of the site with a lounge and family area. There's gonna be a fitness center, a children's study room. This was added at the, at the direction of the planning commission. Um, we think it's a great addition. There's a business center. There'll be a mail package delivery center. Um, there's a game room and a bike storage repair center and a sales slash leasing management office included in this building alone. Um, over here you'll see the outdoor space that is around the uh, clubhouse and includes a pool, a spa, a splash pad for children. There's a play park um, for, for children as well over there and, and outdoor dining with uh, barbecues and uh, additional lounge spaces. There'll be some fireplaces and group seating areas um, and, uh, and, and really fenced in with you know, complementary landscaping, really making this a good user experience. 
Um, included of the, in the amenity package are three, uh, well, I'm just highlighting three individual areas. There are more areas than this, but I'm going to kind of uh, focus on these three for now. The, the gathering area, which is right outside um, uh, to the south of the clubhouse, is a gathering space. Um, that's just for, again, additional gathering space for someone wants to host a party and there, maybe there's two parties happening on the same day, so there's multiple areas where multiple family gatherings can happen at the same time. One of the things I really love about this space is that we actually incorporated an outdoor library um, because we, we anticipate a lot of children on this site and that will kind of really you know, push you know, education and, and allowing for the, the trade of books and, and, make, and that will be maintained by the, by the manager. Um, but that, that's, a, that's a nice little addition that we've added. Um, the barbecue outdoor dining area is on the western half of the site. It includes uh, both conventional and Santa Maria barbecues. There's multiple outdoor covered areas, open, uh, areas that are open to the sky. There's also a lawn there um, for you know, kids to run around while the family's uh, barbecuing. So again, really going and creating a, a space that is really about the residents. Um, a pet run. It's not just about the family. Um, it actually is, a, is, a, it is about the family, including the pets, because they're family. Um, and uh, there's a pet run space, which will include uh, a run area for, for, for the little uh, furry friends, as well as uh, a, a pet washing station over there um, for people that don't necessarily want to do the washing you know, in their home, this creates an outdoor space for that. I want to discuss the parking. Um, yes, we have 24 foot wide roads that are narrow. Uh, and as Dana mentioned, that provides a safe environment for cars who are circulating through our neighborhood. Um, I'll point out that this is a gated community, which means that only people who are living in the community and their guests will be driving through the neighborhood. Um, and the reason why they're 24 foot wide, which is the same width of any um, uh, uh, direct uh, access point in other roads, is that the parking that would conventionally be located on the streets have now been located, dispersed throughout the sites in direct access stalls. So you'll see there are about six areas for guest parking that totals about 57 spots for the guests. And that's all, it's, it's still off of the main road, but it just, it's not now lined with those cars. So when you're driving down the road, creating a nice visual experience for these residents, they're gonna see trees, they're gonna see the, the homes. They won't see stacked cars parking all up and down the roads. And again, it creates a safe environment, it creates a safe speed limit. Um, there'll be, a, there'll be a, a speed limit that's enforced by the management company. There'll also be stop signs throughout the community. Um, and, and we feel that this is a, a a better design than having cars lined up along uh, the roads. Um, and then I want to go into the on, on each site, on each individual lot. Each individual lot for the main home has a two-car garage with a two-car uh, driveway. And as Dana mentioned, one of the revisions we've done since our last meeting is that we've extended the driveway an additional foot to make space for the, and we use a Ford F-150, and we'll show it a little later, but to make sure that those trucks are actually on the driveway and they're not spilling out into the street. Um, the, the requirement per the specific plan is a 20-foot uh, driveway. We've added that foot to create that additional space, and one of the benefits of having a professionally managed community is that they will actually enforce that these trucks are not spilling onto the street and that they actually are kept on the, the lot itself. Um, the lots that have an ADU will also include two tandem spots on the side of the home. Um, those tandem spots are not required per code. They're not required by law. We, in meeting with local constituents, parking is the biggest issue in this city um, in terms of residential development areas, uh, especially with ADU law, um, which does not require parking. So we went ahead and added those two spots on the lot itself. So that's additional above and beyond the guest parking spaces, which would normally be found um, in, on, the, on, the, on the main roads. Um, on each lot, again, I mentioned this earlier, an EV charging station will be provided not only for the main home, but also for the ADU. Uh, and beyond that, some of the guest parking spaces will also include EV charging. And that's, um, you know, that's, that's showing another area of where we're kind of being progressive and trying to look towards the future where cars will be electric and people need to be able to charge their, their cars at home. I know that um, I drove an electric car up here a couple months ago and it was very difficult <laughs> to make that trip. Um, because of the amount of charging stations that there are from between here and where I live. So providing the, the space on your lot means that you come home and you plug in. You don't have to go to an additional, uh, to a charging station location somewhere um, within the city to charge your car. You can do it in the comfort of your own home. Walkability. Um, one of the objectives of the specific plan is um, to encourage walkability to all the public roads 
um, as well as the amenities within the site. So what you see on your screen is, uh, is a network of walkways that connect all the homes to the central amenity locations, as well as four access, five access points, sorry, uh, to, the, to the main roads. You have two on the exit only uh, off of La Brea, and you have three off of Western, two at the main entrance, and one at the uh, southern part of the site at the bottom, uh, next to the pet park. Uh, those are pedestrian access points to the main roads so that uh, people can use public transport, they can get, you know, the kids can walk to school, they can walk to the sports complex, and they can also use the future retail site um, uh, at, in, the, in the future when it gets built. Um, one of the major changes that we made, which again Dana mentioned, is that the sidewalks um, are now five feet wide in lieu of the required four feet per code. Um, this was in talking with the commission and understanding that you know, this is, our, uh, this is our, uh, uh, one of the things we wanted to do to e express our support to people that are, you know, have accessibility issues and that a four foot sidewalk does accommodate them, but a five foot sidewalk would make it even more comfortable for people who need ADA access and we went ahead and, and, and added that uh, throughout the site. These are well articulated sidewalks, again for safety, um, and, uh, and, and again, it's a network of walkways that gets you to all parts of the site. Um, we take great uh, pride in our safety standards that we ho uphold on all of our projects. Um, and again, uh, this is something we do on all of our projects, but specifically within Santa Maria, we haven't seen something like this before. This is a gated community that has access controlled uh, entrances and exits, and all of the, the units and amenities are controlled with that same access control point. There's security cameras throughout. There's a safe speed limit that is enforced by the management company. The network of walkways allows for safe walkability uh, throughout the neighborhood, uh, and these walkways are well articulated with differentiation of materials and colors. Abundant of site lighting, and again, a professionally managed community that will ensure the safety of the residents. A lot of times when you have a community that is under one HOA, there's a lot of finger pointing on who's in charge of what, and it doesn't necessarily always um, result in, the, in, in, in a safe community. So by having a professionally managed community, it allows for one uh, property management company that it is their responsibility to ensure the safety of the residents. And that's what you have with this community. The landscape design. Uh, one of the requirements of the specific plan is a street tree to, you know, to be placed on every single lot. Um, this, the landscaping is stylistically coordinated um, with the main entry and with the architecture of the homes. Um, we added an abundance of pocket parks and gathering areas, um, and, uh, and, and, it, and it is going to be lush landscaping. Now, I do want to bring out one point that, you know, as we, you know, in California we have water issues, and as we progress towards a more drought-tolerant landscaped uh, future, We've kind of taken that into consideration, and we'll, we'll, you'll see a lot of grass creep, which we'll get into in a minute. There is some turfed areas. I mean, uh, still with your traditional landscaping, but trying to minimize the water usage on the site, and, uh, and we've taken that into consideration without compromising the landscape design and look and feel of the project. We're also gonna be using a sustainable drip irrigation system that also uses, when we're, we do need to use water, there'll be a lot less uh, water usage because of that drip irrigation system. This is just uh, some renderings and some photos of the um, additional pocket parks and gathering spaces um, and, and the front entry um, and how we're, we're really trying to make the resident experience a comfortable one and an enjoyable one. So uh, now we'll go into the actual architecture of this uh, project, of this specific lot, lots eight and 10. As Dana mentioned, the theme of, the, of this specific uh, area is Spanish Mediterranean. We've gone and as you can see on the screen there are five model homes with different types of roof, different types of colors and finishes, different balconies and windows, different massing in different areas um, and what we've uh, been able to achieve is actually that one in every 48 homes are actually going to be exactly identical and that's different from the last time we were here. Last time we were here was one in 26 homes. We further went and to create that additional differentiation and architectural interest and visual interest is that one, only two homes effectively will be the same, exactly the same on every single uh, uh, lot and that's a differentiation between the Hollywood uh, uh, parking which we'll get into in a moment Colors, finishes, tile finishes, roof tile finishes, um, you know, gable and hip roof ends, um, and, and we can get into that a little more in the next uh, two slides. Uh, directly in front of you is a 
clearer image of the uh, of the actual rendering. Um, if you guys would like, I'm happy to uh, bring it up close if you guys want to see it in, in greater detail. Um, and directly adjacent to that is actual material finishes and color samples of the different finishes that you'll see on, on our homes. So these are the five designs. Um, you see that there are five models, again, with additional fi five design variations, which will be interchanged between the different model homes um, with different you know, roof tile colors, uh, accent colors, and different you know, iron details and light fixtures and garage doors and shapes of the garage doors um, and, and roof and, uh, sorry, a window and door trim. This is just another blown up version of uh, what you saw in the previous slide. This is a typical lot layout of the lots that include an ADU. Um, so what you'll see is the main home uh, with a two car, two car garage, a two car uh, driveway, and again, what you see on the screen is the, uh, to the left, you'll see that's a, a CAD file pulled from the Ford F-150 website, uh, which shows the actual dimensions of a Ford F-150 and how it will fit on our driveway with additional space. The driveways are now 21 feet from the property line. To the right of that, you'll see that's a typical car size. So that's what most residents will probably have. But if you do have a truck, it will still fit on that site. Um, to the left side of the, of the lot, you'll see the tandem ADU parking. As Dana mentioned, our initial design did include um, carports, covered carports for the ADU. Um, in order to do that, we required a modification and per the direction of city staff, in order to remove an additional modification, we've actually removed this, uh, the covered car area. I st we still think that it's a, it's a good design. Um, but in order to comply with the specific plan, we've made that change. Um, but what, in order to make up for that, you'll see the Hollywood-style driveway, which uh, has that strip of landscaping down the middle. Um, and the way we're thinking about this, you know, in, in other cities, they have this Hollywood strip of landscaping. A lot of times, it's, um, you know, cars are driving over the, the center line. You kind of really have to be, you know, driving in a, in, a, in a direct, in a straight line in order not to drive over it. So we've gone ahead and designed this strip of landscaping to be able to uh, be maintained wall cars might make that mistake. So the strip of landscaping is gonna, is gonna be a one of three different designs. Um, it will either be grass turf that looks really realistic to the grass that's on the site, um, or it will be grass crete, which is a design that essentially allows uh, grass to grow in between pieces of concrete, and that, uh, again, allows for drivability as opposed to having dirt under the grass. There'll be concrete pieces that are go in this strip with grass that will grow over it. And the third design is a, is a, is a Mexicali pebble design, which again, a, a cars can drive right over that without damaging the tires and, um, and still maintaining the look of the home. So between those three designs, between the different model homes, between the, the different roof trim finishes, window styles, and colors and finishes and accent colors, we really have only one in 48 homes being repeated. One in 48 homes. The specific plan allows you to repeat every fourth home. We're one in 48 homes. For, ident for an identical home. The interior of the, of the homes are really designed for uh, family living. You have your kitchen, living, dining, open family space, um, which is right off of a, a, a very large yard for the main home. Um, there's a powder room downstairs for guests who might want to use the restroom. Um, and as you go upstairs, you'll see that there's a differentiation between three and four bedrooms um, with either two or three bathrooms additional upstairs, um, which, uh, w which is for, for the family. This is substantially larger uh, than what you'll find on a normal three or four bedroom apartment that's located in Santa Maria. In the, in the back of the lot, uh, you have a private walkway that leads to the ADU. Uh, the ADU is a 723 square foot uh, accessory dwelling unit that is also designed, it's a one bedroom uh, accessory dwelling unit. It's, it's designed for privacy. There's a uh, privacy wall with landscaping that separates the main yard and the, and the ADU yard. So you, you can either have grandma living there who wants a, a more, some more privacy. Maybe it's um, a, a college graduate who wants to live outside of the home. Or maybe it's a completely different tenant altogether. Um, but either way, the, the, the way we've designed these accessory dwelling units um, is to be able to provide a, a most of privacy. And no windows on the accessory dwelling unit look inside the yard of the main home and vice versa. Um, and additionally, as the ADU, par uh, the ADU parking, tenant parking spaces on the side, there's no windows on that side of the home either to provide um, ample privacy between the two uh, residences.
So now we're gonna go through the modifications. Um, in the last session that we had, uh, there were some modifications that um, there was questions about. So we wanted to really clarify and um, understand each modification. I, this was already mentioned, but when we first came here, there was a encroachment of the carport into the 10 foot side yard setback um, on the left hand of the, of the site. We removed this modification in order to comply and be able to reduce the modifications being requested. Um, the, this was at the direction of city staff, and, and we again we, we think it's a, a good design to have these carports. It adds into it adds architectural visual interest, um, but again, in order to comply with the specific plan, we've removed it. The actual first modification that is being requested is a reduction in 50% front yard landscaping requirement. Um, and Dana did correct that it's, a, it's actually a request for additional paved area in the front yard landscaping. Uh, when we first, uh, when we came to you guys on March 15th, there was a 41% area of landscaping and 59% paved area when the specific plan allows for only 50%. Since then, we've added the Hollywood style driveway, which adds that additional landscaping there, and that brings us an additional 5% above what we showed you. So now there's 46% landscaped area um, along the, the front of the homes and 54% uh, paved area. So we're asking for a 4% um, uh, additional paved area in the front yard. Uh, project modification number two. Um, is in re as it relates to the six corner lots that are located at the southern half of the site. These six lots, um, the reason why we're asking for this encroachment into the side yard is in conversations with the planning commission, you know, parking being such a big issue, we initially on the west half of the site did not have those six parking spaces when we first presented this project at our study session. In our second study session, in order to add some additional guest parking areas and to widen, to add more walkways and widen the walkways, we've had to request this uh, uh, encroachment. It's a two to nine foot encroachment on these six lots. And again, it's to allow space for those six additional guest parking spots, which uh, we feel is a, is a, is a very good trade-off, um, uh, parking being such a huge issue in the city. And again, it, it only applies to six lots. All the other lots do comply. Modification number three is a five foot front yard encroachment of residential living space to achieve the specific plan requirements. The specific plan requirements uh, require that the, uh, the garage be set back a minimum of 20 feet from the, front, uh, from the front property line. And then additionally, the garage has to be six feet from the back of the residential living space. So really in order to comply with the specific plan, we require this modification to meet those requirements and to make that the garage is not the predominant feature in the front yard. So yes, we are asking for this modification. The specific plan does pave the way for the planning commission to approve up to a 50% encroachment into the front yard. We're at the 16 to 17% encroachment with this uh, residential living space. And then the last modification that was uh, spoken about last time uh, was lot 54. Um, as Dana mentioned, we were able to redesign the lot so that we comply with the site distance requirements on this specific lot. It's one lot. Uh, this modification has also been removed. So um, really what we have here is three modifications that are being requested. Previously we showed five. Um, and, and we'll go through, these are the overall project changes since we've kind of been talking and going back and forth. I just wanted to highlight the ADU parking, not required by code. We added those two tandem parking spaces. The, the carport, um, initially, they were on all 96 lots. When we presented it to city staff, we requested that it be on 44 of the 96 lots in our revision. But again, city staff re requested that we remove the modification completely. So uh, we've actually removed all the carports. Um, the driveway length uh, to accommodate a large truck. We initially showed a 16 foot driveway and we now have a 21 foot driveway to accommodate a Ford F-150 or similar. Uh, guest parking spaces, initially we only had 37, um, which is the exact amount of spaces that you would have fit um, a parallel parking on these roads. We've upped that number to 57 guest parking spaces. Um, initially we came with a kind of uh, white base with color accent home designs. Now we have five base colors with multiple accents, trims, and materials. Um, again, one in 48 homes will be repeated. 
uh, walkability. Initially, we had 50%, 55% of the frontage of the homes with sidewalks. Um, you'll notice that in some of the other surrounding neighborhoods, like Heritage, which is directly west of the site, that they don't have sidewalks on most of the roads. They have a network of walkways that lead to the public spaces and to the public roads. So initially, when we came with, when we came before the Planning Commission, we had a similar idea, um, and now it's. Uh, been changed. 80% of the frontage has uh, has walkways, um, and uh, and they reach all the amenities and the public spaces. We've added a children's study room, um, and the sidewalk sizes. And this is just a recent change. They went from four sidewalk, four foot sidewalks, which are required per code, and now we have five foot sidewalks. Um, the front yard landscaping. Initially, we were requesting a modification um, that had 41% front yard landscaping, and now it's 46% landscaped, without compromising the ADU parking which is uh, so needed. Um, so with that, I uh, finished my presentation. Um, thank you guys so much for listening, and I'm open to any questions. Uh, do we have any questions for the applicant? <clears throat> Commissioner Blanco. No, not at this time, right at the moment. Thank you. Any questions? Commissioner Mohajer? Um, uh, not necessarily a question, no. I'll, I'll wait for the comment. Commissioner Dickerson. Um, I, I had a question for you about, uh, um, you know, the being private, private streets and, and, and private, uh, private community and whatnot. You know, out in the, of course, public public streets will um, have some sort of a standardization in case as they start to degrade that sort of thing, and then we can argue whether or not. We do a good job of maintaining those streets. Some yes, some no. I'm just kind of curious how uh, how often or what do you think the maintenance is going to be on this particular community? Since since you've got everyone kind of captured in there, um, obviously you know we would also like to make sure that they're that it's going to be maintained at the at the level that um, at the very high level that you you've expressed. Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, the maintenance of the public spaces will be done by the uh, management company um, that manages the site, and that is their job to do. So if, if there's a, a pothole on the street, that's automatically being fixed, uh, you know, right away. Uh, again, you know, the residents' experience is of utmost importance to us, mm -hmm. and that's not a positive thing to have a pothole in the middle of the street. So it will be fixed, you know, right away. There's cleaning that's done weekly throughout the streets. And again, because there's no parking, a lot of times when you have the street cleaning, mm -hmm. cars have to move from this side to that side. So the parking, keep, keeping those parking spaces off the street allow us for you know, really uh, clean, uh, sorry, a, re a really seamless cleaning of the, of the, of the roadways. Um, but in answer to your question, it's, it's maintained by the management company. Excellent. Um, you, you said that you, had, you have kind of a tandem concept or plan of potentially selling as put them out there as a for sale type of thing. It, 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 given that everything is in, uh, private streets and everything is, how do you envision that? I mean, it was basically it would it would work off of an enormous HOA. I mean, is that is that how that would work? So again, just to the west of the site, Heritage is run exactly yeah. um, as a for sale product. That's a gated community that has an HOA that maintains their own private road. So in the event that that happens, an HOA would be formed and go through the processes and procedures um, to, to show uh, a, a maintenance agreement and a maintenance schedule uh, to the state to make sure that these uh, roads are maintained in the, in, in the proper way. Great. Thank you very much. I have a few questions. Thank you. Uh, you're the rental agency, uh, and so you're talking about the ADUs being rented out to family or uh, a friend or grandma or something like that. How do you determine that uh, if you're the rental agency? The, the people come to you and say, I want to rent this house, but I also want to rent the ADU, or if it's already previously rented when they are, they're there, when the tenant moves out, they have a request. How does that work? So yeah, um, the, the tenants will be, it's a first come, first serve basis. So if um, a tenant wants to rent both the home and the ADU, they'd be able to make that request to the management company um, at that time. If they decided they wanted the ADU after someone moved out of the ADU, they can make that request as well. Um, and there's uh, going to be many different lots on the site. So if one particular lot doesn't work for that family and they want the ADU as well, they can go and choose an, uh, another lot. But the management company tries their best to accommodate those types of situations where they'll be able to have both the ADU and the main home. Okay. Um, 
the five foot sidewalks, I think that's a great idea. I just recently had an experience um, at the park by my house and the, uh, the, the landscaping had kind of encroached on the sidewalk. I didn't have my dog with me this time. I was walking along, there's two ladies coming up and it kind of crunched up a little bit and the lady behind uh, stepped sideways on the sidewalk and actually fell. Uh, it was it was bad. So uh, yeah, I, I agree with the five foot sidewalks. I, and I believe those are five four foot sidewalks too. So uh, yeah, that that I think that's a really good idea. After seeing that, um, it was it was not good. Uh, the package delivery center that's something to uh, porch pirates. Uh, is that the, is that what's going on there? Uh, so some they they have a safe place to get their packaging. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, it's, uh, it's package delivery lockers that essentially will let the tenant know that a package has arrived for them in lieu of, let's say, the, the package Amazon delivering it to someone's front home and leaving it there and having the ability for someone to then take that package if no one's home. They will deliver it to the package delivery center. They'll put it inside one of these uh, secured lockers. The resident will then get a notice that their package has arrived with a one-time code to unlock the locker and actually retrieve their package. Good idea. Uh, the EV uh, charging stations on site. A lot of times uh, EV uh, charging stations are required on new projects, but they aren't required to be finished. So are you talking about finished EV stations that the people can actually use? Yeah, actually installed uh, for every resident. So the resident will not have to install their own EV charger. It will come already built in. Excellent. Okay. All right. Uh, I did notice on there that you said Santa Barbara style barbecues, and I, I noticed that in your Burbage, you, you, you corrected that, so thank you. Uh, My it, is apologies. A, it is a Santa Maria style barbecue. It is a Santa Maria style barbecue. Yes. Uh, we, uh, did I hear you right? I thought I saw that you were going to construct 44 carports, but I think you said that you have eliminated all of the carports? Yeah, so um, I'll let Dana kind of address that, but our, our initial resubmittal um, had a just reduced amount of carports. We felt that having a balance of some homes with and some homes without a carport that would add that it would be beneficial to the community uh, but in speaking with city staff they didn't think that we should be requesting this modification but i'll let dana elaborate thank, thank you. you it's not so much that we didn't think it would be good for the project it's that the specific plan does not actually permit it um, in the the side yard setbacks the commission can grant a reduction in the 10-foot side yard setback but that in no case can the reduction be more than five feet. And um, in the case of the carports, they were actually going at eight feet into that 10 foot setback. And um, the specific plan says in no case can it go more than five feet. So that's just not a modification that your commission can approve. I like those carports. I think the people would have uh, really benefited from that. That's too bad. Um, especially in the ADUs, they, they don't have a car, they don't have any, uh, there's no garages, obviously, so they're always going to be out in the weather, whether they're putting their kids in the car, groceries, uh, so there's just no way to get the carports done. Chair Seifert, I mean, the only way would, would be if the applicant was able to design a carport that only encroached into the five, five feet into that 10 feet, um, and I don't know if that's possible. I, I, I'm not sure if there's enough room, so okay. that would be the only way. Thing. Okay. I really thought that that added to the project. That's unfortunate. Uh, okay. Uh, I believe that's all of my questions for right now. Uh, does any of the commissioners, would they like to see the color boards? Okay. I think that's, uh, that's it for us for right now. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Time. Okay. At this time, we're going to uh, open this up to the public. Uh, we're going to uh, hear the written communications first, and then uh, when do we when do we do the Zoom, uh, Dana? Do we do that second or first? What, what, what's the order on that? <laughs> Chair Seifert, we can start with that. Um, if you're on Zoom and you would like to make a comment on this project, please go ahead and raise your hand. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Oh, we were talking about Zoom. I was just offering that if they're on there and they want to talk. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. We do have uh, quite a few speaker slips tonight. 
Um, I do have the ability to limit the time, but what I would rather do is to uh, just uh, ask you to be brief, uh, get to the point. Uh, if you can shorten up your time, that would be really great because we're going to be here for about 30 minutes otherwise. But that's fine if, uh, if that's what you have to say, but if you can shorten it, that would be great. So our first uh, speakers are Lindy Hatcher, followed by Felix Esparza, followed by Alex Castillo. Lindy Hatcher, please state your name and address for the record. Hi, Lindy Hatcher, and I'm from San Luis Obispo, California. Well, three minutes. Yes, I wasn't going to. Ex I wasn't going to drop it down to two or one, but uh, I do ask you to be brief. Thank you. Okay. Hello, Chair Seaford and Planning Commission. I'm Lindy Hatcher, Executive Director of the Home Builders Association of the Central Coast, and um, the HBA supports projects like the Blosser Ranch and believes that this development will benefit the residents and the city of Santa Maria. It increases needed workforce housing. Our current supply and demand problem helps create and exasperate our housing crisis. With fewer houses available on the market, the price increases and drives up as more people compete for those houses and rentals. And we see this project as part of the solution. So as you've heard, major employers need workforce housing. And in order to attract and attain and retain these employees, you have to have the housing in place. So the project's amenities and the location with easy access to restaurants and shopping and nearby access to 101 uh, really uh, is enticing and um, having the amenities where one could recreate and work out and take the kids swimming right on site and to the, to the um, sports complex is desirable. Uh, the Blosser Ranch satisfies a standing community need for the youth sports center. So we're really excited to see that um, in exchange for the Quimby fees. Um, this development includes sustainable design as you heard earlier. Uh, with energy efficient buildings and solar panels and EV car chargers. I won't go into all of them, but uh, th these are um, helpful in uh, reducing the environmental impacts of the project. Uh, I'm gonna change it up a little bit. As a former military spouse, yes, 12 years, <laughs> we looked for projects, we looked for housing developments like this. The more amenities, the more likely I am to be at that project. While the military active duty member will work on base, the family doesn't have to live at the base. And not everyone needs to commute to schools and to jobs. So the family usually stays and looks for a nice place like this with amenities where they can live off base and recreate and take their kids to school and, and do everything in their own little community. Uh, we ask you to approve this project with components of workforce and affordable housing. Um, not everyone qualifies for affordable housing, so the workforce housing component is very desirable to um, the hospitals and the college, and me, I'm trying to hire, <laughs> to a lot of people that uh, really need more workers. Um, and it also sets us up for projects like the Space Force Space Expansion. I mean, they just added a new launch ramp right now. They're gonna need employees to service that. Uh, we, we know it's tough for the employers to attract and retain employees and we ask you to uh, just approve this project and get more housing supply in the mix. Thank you Thank very you. much. Felix Esparza. Please state your name and address for the record. I live in Santa Maria and I have been living in Santa Maria for over 35 years. I am a retired police officer. I work here for 25 years. I support this project and I encourage you commissioners to give it a, a positive and a, a vote to continue forward. As I think of my experience uh, in, in terms of uh, crime prevention strategies, ideas and design, uh, a lot of the features built into this community meet that, in my experience, that criteria where you, you are able to maintain some of the, uh, some of the suspects, some of the potential crime from, being, from attacking a given community. 
I support this project for the organic design, for the natural, the beautiful design of the homes that we saw from the ADUs, from the smaller homes to larger scale homes. Um, this will include many affordable housing units and uh, it'll provide that opportunity for low income families to middle income families to be able to have access to a house, whether it's for themselves as a single person or for a family. As we know, California is facing a housing crisis. We see it, we see it in our community, we see families being displaced. I, I've talked to some nonprofit groups that help families find them homes throughout our community and th that seems to be the concern, whether you talk to, again, nonprofits, to companies, corporations that are looking to house some of these families. So this will certainly uh, provide an answer to that problem that we're having. And in closing, I'd like to say that housing is a basic human right. Everybody should have access to, to a house, to a home, to, to maintain their family group together. And um, I thank you very much for your time and your dedication as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Alex Castillo. Uh, Alex Castillo. Uh, well, next three speakers would be Ernesto Casillas, Krista Jeffries, and Gabriel Ora. Hi, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Ernesto Casillas. I, I live here in uh, Santa Maria, California. I've been a resident since December 2020. Uh, I work at a public university here in the county, and I work with many junior college and Division I athletes. And the biggest issue facing uh, our university and many colleges in the county and across the state is just simply housing, you know? So I don't mean to echo a lot of the sentiments that folks have already said, but the need for affordable housing in this community, in this state, is just couldn't be any more dire. We have college students sleeping in their cars, uh, student athletes that play on teams that represent this community that can't find housing, that have to, you know, we all have to call our family and friends and people that we know just to see if we can find them a room for rent. Um, I have family members that live outside of this community that have wanted to come here that love the area but simply can't find housing. Um, and I think another big benefit is the sports complex park. You know, I have three small children. On the weekends, we've gone to like basketball courts and we simply can't use them because they're too crowded. Uh, I know many uh, sports teams here in the community that are looking for uh, places to practice that can't find places to practice because other facilities are booked up. Um, so I think the biggest benefits for me for this project, number one, is providing housing for the community, to, for everyone, more affordable housing, more options, uh, an increase in our rental capacity as it showed earlier, um, and really just providing updated infrastructure, new sports facilities, uh, giving the youth in this community a place to come together, a place to have activities. Um, and thank you for your time. Uh, I recommend you approve this project. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Ernesto, Cas that, was that you? Casillas. Krista Jeffries, please. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Krista Jeffries, and I'm a policy analyst with a local consulting firm. And what I do for my job is I basically track a lot of housing developments and approvals and processes that change all around the Central Coast. And when I look at Blosser Ranch, the thing that stands out to me the most, and I look at projects from um, San Miguel, Paso Robles, all the way down to Santa Barbara, the thing that stands out about Blosser is there's a very specific niche in the market that Blosser meets that a lot of other projects um, are not meeting. Now, not one single project can meet every single niche in the market. That's an unreasonable expectation, but um, Blosser, really, when I look at it, it seems to me like it caters to um, families who are really stuck between trying to see if they can uh, flip a fixer-upper or cram their family into a two or three bedroom apartment and then kind of deal with noise complaints and some of the friction that happens with lots of families living in a, a denser environment. Um, and so they're looking for a single family house. They can afford the monthly payment for a single family house, but they don't have the down payment. And Blosser, to me, looks like it really meets that 
family niche that isn't really seen in a lot of other places. There's a lot of demand for different kinds of homes, um, but I don't see very many things like Blosser. Um, and then to take it to kind of the other end of the age spectrum, um, my grand, my in-laws had to move from a 30-acre horse ranch when they couldn't maintain it anymore. They were in their 50s. My father-in-law was retiring. And they looked all over the place to find somewhere that had enough space where they could host their grandkids. They have five grandkids now. Um, but they don't need that space all of the time, and they're not going to be able to live in a single-family home for a long period of time. They're eventually going to need to downsize to a, a townhome or a condo. And if I could go back in time, I would tell them to look for something like Blosser, where they could rent a single-family house that has the space, that has the privacy and the yard for grandkids for a couple of years until you know they're all in school and we can't visit every weekend. Um, but then eventually have the flexibility to move into a, um, an ownership, smaller compact footprint like a, a townhome or a condo. Uh, so I think this project looks really great. I think it's going to meet a very specific need. and. Um, Hope I'm invited to the groundbreaking. Thank you. Uh, Sonny, uh, excuse me. I'm sorry, you, you, you said you worked for a consulting firm. Are you speaking for the consulting firm or for yourself? I am a, I'm a policy analyst for a consultant, and I'm speaking for myself. You're speaking for yourself. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gabriel, I think I got that wrong. Uh, Gabriella, Ora? I'm Gabrielle Laura. Good evening. I'm from Arroyo Grande. Um, I will be brief. Um, I'm just a local realtor, and I'm in support of Blosser Ranch because with rising prices in California and everywhere, rent especially, we know that many families in Santa Maria are subjected to overcrowding and multiple people in a small square foot residence. Blosser Ranch would provide decently sized up to 2,000 square foot single level homes to deter from that overcrowding and affordability. Um, as said already previously, housing is a fundamental right, and so is access to adequate size homes, dependent on the number of family members. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mary Jacka. State your name and address, please, for the record. Mary Jacka, and um, I'm a resident of Santa Maria also. I, um, I came here to learn more about the Blosser um, project, uh, and I, I'm very impressed with the presentation tonight, and um, especially the 19 and a half acres for the sports complex. As you recall, there's been a big need, a demonstration of, of um, soccer parents and coaches that have uh, been requesting. Um, uh, soccer fields, and um, and I hope they're not going to be drainage, you know, the, that you call soccer fields. Uh, I hope they're really going to be soccer fields tournament um, for tournaments, because it's really a big need. And the city is losing out um, on, you know, people coming to play in a tournament. They're going to rent hotels, buy food, etc. All the good things that come um, with the complex. <clears throat> so I'm happy about that. And also in the community building, um, I had mentioned before I read this um, document um, to um, the, the builders and developers about the um, study rooms for students, the room for um, the students to be able to do their homework. And right now, there's a big problem with having access. If, if they do happen to have a computer or laptop in the home, then they can't you know, access um, the internet uh, for homework purposes. So I'm really pleased that this has been included. Um, it's a big need for our families um, in the community. And I hope it goes through. We'll see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speakers are Rebecca Velasquez oh. and then the last speaker will be Glenn Morris. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Um, I am a Santa Maria resident. I live in um, Heritage Square actually, which is very close to the Blosser project. Um, 
and I'm here to reiterate my support for the project. Um, and then I just want to draw a comparison in terms of like another private um, single family home neighborhood in the area that's already here in our town. Um, the difference between Blosser and my neighborhood is drastic in terms of um, planning and thoughtfulness to the details. Um, my middle child is a wheelchair user and we will go on walks around our neighborhood. It's very safe, it's gated, it's safe, it's clean. I love our neighborhood, but in terms of thoughtfulness, the sidewalks don't connect to each other. There's not a lot of ramps. So, um, and then there's actually some streets that don't even have sidewalks. And these are the private streets in our neighborhood. So we take walks in the street, um, which I don't love, but you know, it, it's fairly safe. But if I could have a neighborhood that we lived in with sidewalks that connected, and then also we're five feet wide, like, wow, luxury. But um, also we don't have lights, street lights on a lot of the streets. Um, so, Every year for trick or treating is like, you know, when the sun <laughs> goes down too, you know, it gets too dark, then we got to call it a night um, in terms of safety. And then um, our driveways do not accommodate a um, Ford F-150. So another reason why we can't walk on the sidewalks where there are sidewalks because there's a truck hanging out in the in the way. So um, that is it for me. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Glenn Morris. Chair Seifert, members of the commission, thank you for this uh, opportunity this evening. Um, I, I'm not going to go over the points that have been made, but I, I wanted to just share a couple of quick thoughts. And um, who am I speaking with right now? Name and uh, address, please. Is that a fine now, too? <laughs> uh, Glenn Morris with the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, so I think that there has been, um, uh, I think this has been an interesting project to watch work its way through the process. Um, and, and I think it's, as I've thought about it, it's, it, it's different, right? We're, we're talking about something that's unique uh, or new in the city. But is it really, right? So if, if they had not um, disclosed that these were rental homes, this would have been considered as any other neighborhood and probably would have been approved uh, without a lot of comment and consideration. Um, if they squeezed these things together and stacked them tall, it would look and feel just like a uh, townhome unit, uh, much like the 300 units about a mile south that you approved recently. Uh, so I think when you, when you strip away some of the, the trappings of it, it, it really is the kind of thing that you all have dealt with before. Um, and, and I think when you, when, you, when you put that lens on it, it feels like something we can handle. Uh, I've also heard some concerns about, uh, and, and I think the applicant acknowledged it, they're new in the community. We don't know them as well as we might other buildings. Uh, we don't know what their, their history or, or their, how they will manage the, the, this project going forward. Uh, what I find in looking at new friends, new, new opportunities, is I try to to evaluate future behavior against past behavior. Um, and I think if you really consider the interaction that this team has had with the city, I, I think they deserve the benefit of the doubt. Um, they have been transparent. They did not have to disclose that these would be rental homes. They did not have to disclose and invite um, input and review over the ADUs. Um, they have, at each of your study sessions and past sessions, uh, they have listened to the feedback that you have given them and made changes, even tonight. Uh, they've come back because commissioners of six, four weeks ago had concerns about some of the uh, features of the property. Um, they have done additional studies and, and gathered additional data to try to answer your questions. I think their behavior gives them maybe a little bit of the benefit of the doubt that they will be good members of our community and good citizens moving forward. Finally, I would just say this, is there a need? I think it's clear in our community there is a need for housing. Is there public support? I don't know of a single um, um, entry in your record, in the public record on this that opposes this project. There has been clear 
public support from all different parts of the community around this. Your staff findings and recommendations have consistently been to approve this project. I think they deserve the, the, the respect as well for their work and analysis. Um, and I think that all leads you to a really simple solution, and that's a yes vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Would the applicant like to speak again? Uh, says rebuttals. I don't think there's anything to rebut right now, but would you like to speak? Um, no, but if there are any further questions um, after the deliberation that we can have an opportunity to address, we, we'd love that opportunity. Commissioners? Commissioner Blanco. Uh, yeah, maybe one uh, question, I, you know, <clears throat> or comment. I don't know if this is for the applicant or staff, but... Um, you know, we talked about the, the front and um, the driveways and I think making accommodations for that landscaping requirement. Um, would the applicant or, you know, the city be um, open to maybe, um, <clears throat> I don't know, stamping, just, just for additional aesthetic treatment, maybe stamping some of those driveways? Um, just to give it, you know, I, I understand the 50% threshold and I'm and seeing a lot of concrete, but as a very easy treatment, would that be something that um, you guys would be open to? Maybe stamping certain driveways. Uh, I don't. I'm not saying elaborately, but some sort of stamp treatment to maybe break up that that sea of concrete along the front. I think the the Hollywood uh, driveway actually does make some sense, and I think you know we spoke about that at our meeting. But um, you know, additional treatment to maybe break up some of that driveway area where we can't meet the 50 percent threshold at this point, but maybe that that's a decent trade-off. Um, is that is that easy? Yes, absolutely. That's that's a very okay. easy uh, change that we can incorporate in our design. Okay. I just think an, an additional aesthetic feature could in, in general benefit the project too. Are you through? Commissioner Blanco? Is that it? So, yeah, that's it. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Dickerson. Um, kind of uh, on that same line of thought, I, I don't have the um, I don't have the, the plans uh, for the sidewalks in front of me. Are the are the, are the corners um, um, handicap accessible? Are they are they sloped? Yeah, that's required by code. Okay, good. I just wanted to make double sure of that. For the, the young lady brought it up, and so I wanted to make sure that there there was somebody absolutely there. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing at this time. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Chair Seifert? Yes? I'd just like to mention that um, <coughs> we would just add a condition of approval on the stamped concrete. Um, I just want to make sure it gets captured in, um, you know, in the record. But that's just something we can add um, if the project were to get approved. And I just want to make sure that's uh, noted. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. At this time, we have time to... Uh, have discussions about this project? Commissioners? Commissioner Dickerson. Um, we're, we're here this second night both because of Commissioner Blanco and myself. We each had different reasons for, um, for wanting to, to come back to, uh, uh, to a second session. Um, I, I want to first, I, I've given a tremendous amount of thought to this, to this project. Um, I first want to thank all the various people that reached out to me and that I reached out to to uh, to talk to about this because they've given me various perspectives and uh, um, answered a lot of questions that I had and I bounced questions off of them and etc it was it was very very useful um, as as most of you know my concerns uh, are of the potential negative impacts of the build for rent business model especially scaled as this is this will probably ultimately might uh, might be um, on the city's uh, rental market rates. Um, I, I am concerned about that. I, I Frankly, I remain concerned about that. But with that being said, um, honestly, I, I, I can't in good conscience base my decisions on anything I don't have evidentiary support of. And staff has not been able to find uh, anything I in the time that they've been allotted. Um, and so, uh, from that standpoint, um, I'd rather at this point than turn to the positives. Um, um, at every step of this process, 
you have listened to what we've said, you've modified things, you assisted in making this a better and better project. Um, assuming, assuming everything is, is, is as stated in your presentation, uh, you have an excellent quality product. Um, I think the concept of these neighborhoods uh, is, is great. I mean, we're, we are regularly losing neighborhoods and you're talking about building neighborhoods. You know, it's so, uh, it's, it's a tremendously positive thing. The community center, of course, for people to go to the pool that people could take their kids to, um, the various project revisions, everything is a positive. Um, once again, I, I had, I had one issue and it's because of the business model. But once again, I, I, I can't in good conscience, uh, um, put that in there. So assuming that as we hear from Commissioner Mahajer or uh, we hear the concerns uh, uh, addressed um, by Commissioner Blanco uh, of his past concerns, assuming that, that he is satisfied as well, I mean, I could certainly see supporting this project. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Mahajer. Thank you, Chair. Um, first off, again, thank you to the development team um, for all their hard work on this project. I know there's been a lot of back and forth on this, and I really appreciate uh, making sure you know we meet each other halfway on that. Um, essentially, my feedback is going to be positive. I think the project is going to benefit the city in a number of ways, um, but most importantly, provide the need for housing, which is you know clear that that's really the bottom line, um, and including those. Um, the need to reach the certain um, niches of the community. Um, and as well as the fact that the development isn't just going to benefit um, the tenants, but you know, the city as a whole, providing the amenities such as like the sports field and increasing the walkability of that neighborhood in general, I think is going to be a huge, um, you know, I think it's going to be a positive um, to the city. So I'm in support of the development. Thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Blanco. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I mean, I'll reiterate similar points, but I, th I think I'll, I'll just mention that I, I do definitely appreciate the uh, additional work that's been put in by the applicant and our staff in looking at this harder. Um, we had some very uh, productive meetings, um, very uh, open to suggestions and thoughts um, about making some revisions. And I think, like I said in the past, on, on prior projects that have come not just a second time, even a third time we had, um, you know, the Northman project came to us two or three times. And I think we refined that to the point that the residents nearby came back and really thanked us. And, uh, and, and the applicant, I think, was very happy in the end, too. Um, so I think, um, you know, putting more time into it, uh, I think only benefits um, generally everybody. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I like the way things have uh, progressed and have been uh, revised. I think they've been, um, the applicant's been very flexible um, and considerate of, of the input um, throughout the whole process and, and this last go around especially. Um, so, and, and, and the product I think is, is, is looking very good. I think with, with some of the aesthetic features that, um, that they're talking about having, uh, the variety in the housing, um, I think it's going to look like a very nice product. Um, certainly, we, we, you know, we need more housing. Everybody needs more housing. Every community does. And, um, you know, having more um, supply is always a good thing. Um, that's that's going to help our community in general um, with, with pricing as the supply and demand uh, goes. Um, and just, just in general, I, I appreciate the time uh, and the effort. Uh, um, I, I feel much better. Uh, with the number of exceptions that are being requested, I think we've uh, been more diligent about following the specific plan, which is our guiding document for the for the development here. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate your hard work. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Um, yeah, this is a very interesting project, but you know, I've been I've been doing some work out of town, and I'm seeing the way other people are living right now. And uh, there's there's products where they're building these uh, what look like apartment buildings, and and I just 
I see all those people living in those spaces. They're for sale. Uh, and, and, and I lived in an apartment for a while, and it was not the most comfortable thing I've ever done. I do like having my space. I don't like sharing a wall with anyone. I even uh, suggested to my wife that, oh, we can convert our garage. And she says, I'm not sharing a wall with another uh, uh, tenant. And so the fact that these are single family units, the fact that they're available for the city, for, for, our, uh, for our community, I think that's a real plus because uh, because the, the tendency right now is these 500, 300 square foot units and we're cramming these people into them and I can't imagine that that's something that they'd want to stand for uh, any long period of time. I know that we have the spaceport here. Uh, we just had a, a large meeting uh, a couple a month or so ago, and uh, the colonel is, is adamant that we really need housing, and this type of housing uh, would very much benefit our nearby base. And if the base can show that we have housing in the area, then the spaceport will be at Vandenberg. If we don't show that we have the amenities, then they're going to be looking for other places. And I, I support the base. I support the military uh, families. Thank you. And uh, and I would like to uh, I would like to support that. So I think I think this project goes a long ways towards doing that. Uh, the uh, the applicant has been very malleable as far as uh, uh, the other commissioners. Thank you all for uh, your, your comments and getting this thing through. The, uh, I wouldn't have thought anything about the uh, mm -hmm. sidewalks until I saw that gal fall. And um, she didn't, she wasn't that old. She shouldn't have fallen. And, uh, and it just, it was, you know, it really sticks with me. And, and, and a little bit more sidewalk actually can make a lot of difference. So, so it's little things like that. Uh, that I think are going to make this a better project, the lighting, uh, the, uh, the availability of the sidewalks, the connectability. I think you made some very good points there. I'm not a huge EV uh, uh, fan. Uh, I, I think that the hybrid is actually going to be a, uh, a better use for us. Uh, we just pur recently purchased one and uh, we're getting about 44 miles to the gallon. We don't have to charge it. We don't have to put any additional uh, grid use. Uh, I, think, I think as far as EV goes, I, I'm glad you're putting it in there. There are people that definitely need it and want it, uh, I, but I, I'm not sure if that is actually the future. In my own mind, I think the hybrids are, have actually come a long way and, and might actually fit the need a little bit better than just the EV itself. So, but I do appreciate that you're putting them in and, and I'm sure they'll get used. And uh, the fact that you're actually installing them, because a lot of projects, they just put in the conduits and it sits out there, everybody forgets it's even there, and changes hands. Well, what's that pipe over there for? Oh, I don't know. So they don't, they don't ever get installed. So I, I'm really glad that you're doing that. Um, as far as the, uh, you know, the mass of concrete, I think that's an excellent idea, uh, Commissioner Blanco, uh, because it, you do want to see landscaping. This is something that our, our town really likes. We like our street trees. We do like our landscaping. Uh, the Hollywood-style driveways, uh, I have uh, personal experience with those. They're very, very comfortable. They're very nice. And, and I think it's a great, uh, I think it's a great uh, add added to it, uh, getting, getting that big piece of concrete out there. Uh, and and uh, the stamped and, and doing some decorative, I think that's an excellent idea. Um, yeah, I, I, th I think that's a, that's really nice that you've you've done that. Um, I am uh, a little bit upset about the the loss of the carports. Uh, I was really excited about that for the residents of the ADUs. Um, you know, we I know we've been in a long drought, but we do occasionally get rain, and it's always windy. And to have a little bit of uh, something off your sun to get park your car and the birds aren't landing on it, the trees aren't falling on it, the sap, uh, and the, the availability to get in and out, I think that's really important. So I kind of I kind of kind of mourn the loss of that. I, I, I would have really liked to have seen those. Uh, and I was actually con considering making a motion to include them until uh, Dana tells me that's that's really not in our purview. So uh, I think it's a good project. Uh, I can see being in support of it. And in this time, I would like to uh, ask for a, uh, a motion, uh, if we have one. Commissioners? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'd like to move that we approve plan development permit PD 2022-0007. Do we have a, okay, hang on. Is that, um, to also include the Thank you. Correct, that's correct, thank you. Do we have a second? I second. Can we have a roll call, please? 
Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Mohajer? Aye. Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Chair Seifert? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to, uh, by resolution, um, approve vesting tentative uh, parcel map TR 2022-0006. With revisions that two conditions that were discussed in the documentation. Yes, thank you very much for reminding me of that. Also, Commissioner, it's a track map, not a parcel map. Oh, <clears throat> thank you. Vesting tentative. Huh. It says parcel map down here on the agenda, sorry. Best seen tentative track map, correct? It is, it is written as parcel here, so thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, do we have a second? I second. And can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Mohajer? Aye. Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Chair Seaton? Aye. The project has passed. Now you have to go out and build it and do everything that you've told us you're going to do. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Okay, uh, oral reports from Planning Commission and staff. Dana, do you have anything? Yes, thank you. Uh, just a brief update. Um, we have our study session scheduled for tomorrow at 1.30 at Shepherd Hall. <laughs> and that's to go over a pre-application for Santa Maria Cooler and Box Warehouse. That's out in Area 9. And then our hearing on May 17th, we don't have any items, and so uh, we'd be, we'll, we would be canceling the May 17th hearing. And then um, we do have a study session scheduled for May 18th uh, for the Santa Maria Cemetery District, and also another hearing on June 7th. So um, staying fairly busy. And um, that's all the updates that I have for tonight, but I can answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Commissioner Dickerson. Yeah, just a quick question. If I wanted to um, get something put on the agenda, maybe for a study session, um, then is this the appropriate time or is it tomorrow or to bring it up? Uh, Commissioner Dickerson, you can bring it up here. You could al also reach out to me separately if okay. you want. No, no you know, you, you, you had that report for what, our, um, our gr what the average gross amount that rentals are going for. Um, and I thought it would be nice to maybe on an annual basis to have that report done at a study session and, and then we start getting some sort of a Maybe we even have some historical data for that, so then moving forward we can see whether housing prices are going up, housing prices are going down. You know, I just I'm curious about that, so it's not something that we've had an annual report on, and I'd like to hear that. And not being in the rental market, I, I'm not familiar with it either, and I, I don't know what these these kids and these families. Uh, I'm sure it's well above what I would expect at this point uh, for rent. I, I stopped. Yeah, I stopped checking into that quite a while, but that would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. maybe we could even do one for the near in the near future, give some historical data, and then after that, a year down the road, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, commissioners, anything? We're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>